Hey everyone, Greg here with Science Studio. We've completed our first Intel Skylake build, this one featuring the Intel Core i3-6100, and if you didn't get a chance to watch our holiday budget build videos last week, we'll review all of the parts we've purchased in this video. At the core of our build is, of course, the Intel i3-6100, a part of the new Skylake lineup. Now, it's packing two cores and four threads, thanks to hyperthreading, but it holds its own in games, and we'll prove that shortly. So our ASRock Pro 4 Z170 motherboard came in, and it looked even better in person, to be honest. Uh, first things first, uh, let's go ahead and unhinge the locking mechanism protecting the CPU pins. Uh, make a note of the white arrow on the board and match it up to the golden arrow on the CPU itself. Gently place the CPU into place with both arrows pointing in the same direction, and then rehinge the socket lock. The plastic cover on top should just pop right off at this point. We purchased another Cooler Master Hyper T4 for this rig for the simple reason that we loved it so much on our earlier Scorpion build. No, no really, that, that's actually why we purchased it. It cooled our FX6300 so well that we decided to kind of implement it into our i3 build here. And of course, while our CPU cannot be manually overclocked, it will keep it nice and cool during CPU intensive tasks and games. It's also much better than the stock Intel cooler, to be quite frank. So follow the instructions that came with the cooler corresponding to the LGA socket 1151 motherboard layout, which is the layout of the ASRock board that we have here. Make sure that nothing is too tight or too loose. Uh, things should screw on nice and snug, but don't force anything. Grab a hold of some thermal glue, in our case Arctic Silver 5 high density silver paste, and dab a pea sized amount on top of the CPU. Place the cooler on next, being sure to use the hinge that came with the accessory. There should be a nice firm snap into place when rotating that black lever. So at this point your CPU should be completely installed. Our 2666 MHz DDR4, all nice and blingy, is being installed next. Now for a dual channel array with these Panram dims, place them in either slots 1 and 3 or 2 and 4. Because the cooler in this case is being mounted vertically, we don't have any issue with RAM height like we did in our last build, so you can actually afford to purchase DIMMs with more ostentatious heatsinks if that pleases you. Snap the I.O. shield that came with your motherboard into place at the back of your tower, and prep your assembled motherboard for the merge, the merge, the merge. We have cables hanging all over the place in our case because we reuse an old NZXT S340 tower, but the power supply and cable management phases of the building process typically come right after this step rather than right before it. Once you do have your motherboard situated and screwed into place, install the following items. Your power supply, of course. Your hard drives and or solid state drives as well as any case fans you may have laying around. Oh, and don't forget your graphics card. While our Intel i3 does house onboard graphics, a separate graphics card is always recommended. But now most importantly here, be sure that everything is wired correctly. If you think you may have a faulty part, be sure that you've wired it correctly first to verify that it is actually faulty and that it's not just the fact that it's not plugged into your power supply or motherboard or both. So when assembling is complete, give that power button a push and cross your fingers. If you see lights, you've wired some things correctly, but if you see a post, that is a screen notification that the BIOS is loading, then you've likely wired everything correctly. But you can verify this in the BIOS itself. As long as everything is installed and is being detected, you're likely in the clear. So um, not only do we have the Cooler Master Hyper T4 here, but underneath that obviously is the Intel Core i3. 6100, like I said, clocked at 3.7 gigahertz. I believe it turbos to like 4.0, maybe 4.1. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it does turbo above its uh, stock frequency. So that's uh, something to take note of as well. The motherboard is an ASRock LGA 1151 Pro 4 board. Uh, it's a Z170 board, so it has the ability to overclock a CPU if that CPU is overclockable. In this case, obviously, it's not. 
but a simple swap with an Intel i5 6600K or 6700K i7 uh, would would you know allow you to overclock. So uh, that's cool. So there's some upgradability in this system. You know, you don't have to go buy a whole new motherboard if you want to overclock CPU. So that's quite nice. Uh, and the CPU was pretty cheap compared to the competitors. I didn't have any problem just installing it right away, installing Windows after that. I've read a few comments about how you, you know, should update your BIOS right away or your system will start crashing after a while. I haven't updated the BIOS because I don't like updating BIOS. It just, it's not, uh, it's never worked out for me. So I'm gonna go as long as I can without updating a BIOS, just for the sake of stability at this point in time. So let's jump on over to the benchmarks for this system. We used Geekbench 3 first to benchmark our CPU's performance. You can see our system hooked up to our right. And right away, we were impressed with what we saw. Now for just a two core, four thread processor, we yielded a single core 32 bit score of 3,886 which is actually the third highest of any CPU score on Geekbench's website. That's super impressive for a $120 processor. We had to scroll down quite a bit actually to find AMD's FX series processors on the list. The 8350 single core score, whose architecture is very similar to that of the FX6300 from our Scorpion build, was much lower than our 3886 score. So, not bad for our little i3. Heaven Benchmark was up next to test the GPU side of things, and at Ultra Settings and MSAA at times 2 we yielded an average FPS rate of 31.3. Also not bad at all for our little R7370, which only cost us about $160. We performed some real world installing to test the power of our SanDisk SSD, the specs of which are posted on our $600 Skylake build video and we were very impressed with how snappy everything loaded and installed. Wow, that was quick. GTA was up next, which acted as a blend between CPU and GPU performance, since GTA is notably a very CPU intensive game. And we were very impressed with how it ran. Everything was set to very high, and MSAA was off. However, we had long distance scaling maxed out and even turned on the high definition while flying option. Keep in mind, this is being run with a dual core hyper threaded processor, 8 gigabytes of 2666 MHz DDR4, and a 4 gigabyte ASUS Strix R7370, the total price tag of which comes out to just over $300. That's insane performance for the price. Our Cinebench score was, okay, the only depressing one of the bunch. We only obtained a score of 381, which is actually a little under half of what you'd get from a Haswell i7. But when you consider the fact that the i3 only has two physical cores, it lightens the mood a bit. After all, we're not purchasing this processor for heavy video rendering or anything of that sort. So all in all, when you consider what exactly you're getting performance-wise for your dollar, this Intel Skylake i3 is a solid choice. Games will run super smooth when paired with any modern and efficient graphics card, probably $150 and over, and will also be aided by the ultra-fast and resourceful nature of DDR4 that comes along with it. If you're a GTA 5 junkie like I am, then this setup is for you. Expect to play almost any game you'd like with this setup at 1080p with a stellar FPS rate. You can take that to the bank. Thanks so much for building along with us. Stay tuned for future videos for sure. Give us a like if you thought we were great. Give us a dislike if you thought we were terrible. And please leave feedback or questions in the comment section below. Those are always welcome. And speaking of always, as always, this is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.